Welcome gamers, Stone Monk here representing the Mortal Realms crew. Right now I'm doing uh, one of our uh, hobby phase videos um, and I wanted to share with you kind of what I'm working on right now. Uh, reinvigorated, so this is kind of a constant uh, burn project, but uh, reinvigorated with the Legions of Nagash and the Malign Portents. And that's uh, some remaining uh, undead that I've been, you know, wanting to finish up for a long time. Plus uh, a unit and, uh, you know, for, for Adepticon to add to my Soul Blight army. Um, and uh, I'll show you, show you a couple of things here. Now, first thing to note, and maybe sometime I'll do a video showcasing um, all the different uh, units in my Undead army. Um, because they're all converted from, uh, the idea is that my uh, Vampire Lord on the Zombie Griffin has uh, kind of uh, lurked behind battles and uh, raised skeletons and the undead from various uh, other races and factions. Now, obviously the biggest limiter there is, uh, you know, humans, um, you know, not from necessarily any specific spot, uh, so the skeletons, etc. But but I'll show you some of what I've got going on. All right, the first unit I want to show you are some skeleton archers. Now, I've got uh, two types of skeleton archers. Uh, here we've got uh, Bretonian peasants. Um, now, you know, these guys are, are pretty cool. I've used, uh, intentionally used um, kind of the old, older skeleton head skulls because I thought they felt fit a little bit better with the uh, Bretonian bodies. Um, now, you know, if I wanted to, I could do a ch double check and, and uh, retry that, but it just felt like it fit to the kind of the the older style of the model um, to go with the older heads. Um, so bigger, whatever. This guy's gonna be a banner bearer. We've got our, our uh, um, I don't know, our leader, our hero, and then our, our musician. Um, so these guys are uh, pretty fun. Now the second type of uh, skeleton archer that I have is the elf archer. So I've already got uh, 10 of these elf archers done. Uh, and I had the bits to make five more. Um, and uh, these guys, um, so, you know, just kind of cool with the capes and the quivers, etc. cetera. Um, what's cool with these guys uh, and all of these guys is they'll all eventually have their bows strung because uh, I really like that effect. So I've got 15 peasant archers and then I'll have 15 um, elven archers. Now, the, I'm thinking about changing some of the color scheme on the elven ones I have, which have a little bit of green in it, but not much else in my army has uh, that green. So I think we could go a little more autumn and spring and have it match my uh, red and greens um, and uh, the ethereal blue. So um, that's the first unit. The next unit is to uh, add um, basically 11 more or 10 more uh, models to my skeleton um, sword and board unit. I've got 20 of those already, so this will bring it to 30. Um, eventually I'll go to be able to get a fourth sword and board. That's my favorite uh, of the skeleton loadouts. Uh, it's what I have right now, so these guys will add a lot. I really like, um, even though these skeleton models are made for kind of their forward march, uh, there's a couple of things that kind of uh, can kind of step out of that. You can, uh, like with this guy here, you can get kind of a, a sidestep feel to him so he's kind of uh, kind of circling you uh, which is kind of cool this is just a bit from a uh, Sylvaneth Dryad um, box so instead of his you know his branches going through him but he's still animated um, and then this guy was actually you know from a, I think one of the Tomb King ones um, but you can see his stance looks even more kind of like just ready uh, ready for action and you know you use a couple of uh, extra bits and a nice chaos cape and he's going to make a really good uh, leader. I don't have like one skeleton that's kind of predominant over the other so I think he's going to provide that for those guys. Third unit is this unit of skeleton spearmen. Now um, what I try to do again was kind of incorporate some of the Tomb King, Tomb King aesthetic with the shield. I cut them down a little bit so they wouldn't be just straight up and blocky. Um, and give a little, give a little room uh, towards the bottom, uh, and they're using uh, black knight spears. Um, it's just a little bit longer reach. They just look a little bit more menacing. Uh, I've got multiple banners, so I could split them up or put them all together. Um, I'm definitely one who says you just 
however many banners or musicians you have is what you have. Um, so, um, yeah, so that's the, the third um, 20 strong of the skeleton uh, spearmen. Next, I've got um, Graveguard. And I do have uh, about 10 Orc Graveguard that are from the Titan Forge line of kind of undead skeleton orcs and goblins, which uh, is really cool. I really love those. Um, I would love to get more of those someday, but um, it's hard to come, they're harder to come by. It's harder to get those ordered and get those painted up, and there's not that many variations. Now, it's kind of funny talking about these guys in variation, but I thought these guys would make really good Graveguard. Um, the current Graveguard models for the skeletons just don't don't feel elite or kind of bulky enough for me. I feel like they should be bigger. They should be a little bit stronger than your regular skeleton. So here I've just taken uh, Black Knights, I'm sorry, Chaos Knights, uh, added a, the Tomb King skeleton heads. I felt like those felt a little more barbarian when, when paired with the the leathers and stuff. I mean, you look at some of the Conan uh, headdresses, etc., et and, and these fit right in. Um, we've got a couple of banners. Uh, these front row have axes to go along with their uh, sessionelle. Uh, this guy right here, who's got uh, two axes, uh, calling the shots here. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I really liked how these guys turned out. They they went together really quick and easy. I had to shave off, cut off all of the symbols on the shield. So I'm gonna be figuring out what to put on there. Uh, is the same as the banner, a uh, little little bird head on the top. Again, my, my death army is um, a lot of uh, feathery uh, bird motifs. So these, instead of these being furs, uh, you know, these are, these are going to be feathery black and, and all that kind of stuff. Not that it, at this scale, it, there's much difference between uh, black fur or, or black feathers. But uh, yeah, so that's the next uh, unit. Um, my fifth unit uh, that's, that's in progress and has been for a long time. I gathered these bits together probably year and a half ago, maybe a year ago, um, and slowly assembled them. And this past week I said, hey, we're just getting them together. They're, they're getting together. Um, so these guys are, you know, Black Knights, um, but I was able to get a hold of 15 um, Bretonian Knight bodies. And um, uh, what I've done is I've, uh, this guy in the front here needs uh, some barding, but I was able to use some leather straps, some plastic card, etc., uh, to get some barding on these guys. You can see it around on their sides as well. Um, <clears throat> and then um, what I did as well is I've got five, um, I don't, I'm not as familiar with the Bretonians, um, but we've got five um, Bretonian knights and then you've got your, your one level up knights. So these guys are the guys without helmets and then you've got the guys back here with helmets and then you've got the, the questing knights, which are the, the bigger head honchos. Um, and where the, you know, in Bretonian army, they would ride separately as black knights. They're just going to be all mixed up because my, uh, my vampire Lord likes to just be a little, uh, oh, what would you call that? Uh, um, I mean, he likes to, to deface things and, and uh, mock things and stuff. And so it'd be a great way to mock those Bretonians. Sorry guys. Uh, it just works for my narrative. <laughs> Four out of five, um, blood knights made out of, uh, demigriff knights. Um, I've got five of these built already and I wanted to do the second unit and I've, uh, I'm missing out on one as you know the demigriffs come in, in blocks of three uh, so uh, I've, uh, I've had enough for the nine um, but I'm hoping to get one more in here before Adepticon so I can get that otherwise I'll just run a unit of four it'll be a little bit smaller uh, I've got some heads and shields on the way etc here's Archon I uh, was able to get some basing figured out on him He's been loosely put together for a while. Archon himself was not put together, but uh, I had uh, been using this as a rider for my Vampire Lord for a while um, until I, I got the Zombie Griffin together. Um, yeah, I'm really liking how this turned out. I'm really liking how the skulls turned out. I think I need to go darker with the bone in some places. And you can see this is the general bone um, coloring that I use throughout my army. Maybe it goes a little bit brighter into a white uh, next to the bone color. Um, so I need to do Plenty more of that on this guy. Uh, horse for my uh, vampire lord to ride on. If I don't want him on the on his griffin, he can ride this horse. Still working on that a little bit, laying down the colors and getting things together. 
Uh, and last but not least, um, my very first death model was this guy here, uh, Nagash, uh, when he first came out. Got him on release weekend uh, and loved him. And he was painted, fully painted, uh, but with the switch over to Age of Sigmar, I have uh, rehashed, started rehashing him. He's got new base coats on. Um, started working on some blending on the armor and, and that sort of thing, so still working on that. And then uh, I've just recently gotten him uh, based for Age of Sigmar um, on the round base. So he's got some of the um, arcane ruins. Um, he's got uh, some skeletons, and uh, or a skeleton and some zombies popping up out of the ground. I've uh, hacked off some of these uh, spirit hosts. And I'm going to have them kind of, i got to get one of them popping through this side out of this column so just this idea that while they're passing through on the column they're still making it move uh, there's some energy there and force there uh, and then Nagash himself now this guy may not be you know I'd love to have him you know right now I could snap him in I wouldn't get I want to get the base ready and I could put him on the table I think uh, but I got a lot more work to do with this guy to uh, to get him on the table and I don't need to rush it too much but I would love to have uh, Nagash uh, out and playing during Malign Portents and during uh, Legions of the Gash coming out. So uh, I've only put him on the table maybe three times in the last two years because he was just in 8th edition, not quite ready for prime time. And uh, in uh, Age of Sigmar, I've just been focused on other armies. So and he wasn't he wasn't based for it. So now is the time. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough um, of the, the models I'm working on for completion. Uh, I, I'll show you some of my Death Army another time in another hobby phase. Um, but uh, why don't you tell me what you're working on. Post the link to a video of what you're working on. Post the link to some images or a blog post or something of what you're working on down below. So we can start seeing some of these other armies that are amassing during Malign Portents. Um, thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, to the to like to the video and subscribe to the channel. You'll see more of this stuff coming out as I get it painted. Uh, let me know uh, if there's anything you want to see uh, of my Death Army or conversions, and I'll make sure to shoot some of that stuff first. Thanks.